All right, we are here with Felia, Exuberant Shepherd. Two mana, two two. It's got Flash. Whenever it attacks, you exile a non-land permanent, and then at the beginning of the next end step, return it to the battlefield. If it was a permanent of yours, put a one-one counter on Felia. So, it's mono white, which is still, in my opinion, um, even in this format. It's probably the worst thing you could be doing other than true colorless so however there's a lot of interesting upsides to flickering a thousand oblivion rings your opponent can quite literally never stick to the board then it's it's fine right like if you're just sitting there swinging with a 2-2 that becomes a 3-3 that becomes a 4-4 uh, and you're just exiling everything your opponent's putting into play. <laughs> uh, it's pretty good. Uh, I don't know how amazing it is. It does have flash, though, so you don't just play it on turn two and then lose the game when it dies. You can, like, flash it in. If your opponent doesn't do anything, you're happy. If they do, you're also kind of happy. Uh, there's a lot of ETBs in white, like, uh, quite a bit. There's not a boatload of, like, amazing things, but there's a fair amount of things that I really like to be doing. Elish Norn can double everything we're doing. Um, Cathar's Crusade is pretty cool if I get it going, but these cost five. I don't know if I'm ever getting to that amount of mana. My mana is very straightforward. I almost disagree with this, because this costs mana to leave up, and for the most part, you're mono white. I'm not really trying to leave up mana other than flash this in, so that's kind of weird. Could be a problem actually swinging with this. Uh, it has to have a clear path to actually make contact with the face or have only like a 1-1 one -one in play for the opponent. So I'm running some actual removal, which does get in the way of my enchantment-based removal. It's probably the one pain point I've bumped into while making this. I do like you cannot pass, and there's a second one in here at 2 mana. I'm going to look for it, but... I found these two cards that I really like for this. Uh, you swing, they block it, and then you kill the blocker. So there might be a lot of people who block thinking it's free because you swung with a 2-2 into their 5-5. Five five. Uh, but it wasn't free because you had this. And the only reason they might block and not respect a combat trick, this is the big reason, is because they think you just want it the flicker value and you're fine with this dying. So they, they block it without thinking about a combat trick. And then, boom, you have a combat trick. You also got flicker value, ideally. The strongest thing by far... That's not how you spell that, is it? No, it isn't. Uh, the strongest thing by far are the sagas. There are not a ton of them. And one that really stands out to me is this. Exiling a creature for three mana, and then the next turn gives your commander flying, so you can fly and flicker this to exile another creature. A creature. <laughs> creature. <laughs> Another creature. That's pretty good. Uh, that actually is probably the best card in the deck. Uh, probably. By far. Uh, there's other value here. Like there's this one. You know, you might not see this one too often. The top part is pretty good. Uh, the middle part is not that exciting. And the if it ever flips, I guess I could flicker it if it flips so it's not gone forever. Right? It just goes back to the front side. It's cool, but I mostly like the top part, obviously. And then the other ones are here because the value might be decent. Who knows? Um, but that that one, the princess takes flight, is just completely snapped in half. And let's hope we draw it every time. I could run idyllic tutor, so I can always find it, like with the tutor. But that there's no saying I have that or not. But other than that, it's just a bunch of value flicker things. I won't go card by card. <laughs> there's only so many in the game, and there's only so many worth running. So. Let's send it. Try to keep my intros under five minutes. That'd be ideal. Though it's kind of hard when talking about a Singleton 100 card deck. Okay, Luna's also a combo deck. Well, well I'm not a combo deck, but... I'm Omega High Synergy Value combo. Uh, okay. But this usually just gets um, Omniscience in play. There was a game I played against it, and it did not do that, though, so. Mm. Okay, well, we signed up for the one thing. We'll do the one thing. <laughs> I didn't even see their name. Yeah, I guess. I guess that is kind of crazy, isn't it? All right, Commander dies. Commander does not die. Interesting. 
So, between all the things I can do right now, I think I like this one the most. I kind of disagree completely with that decision, but I just have this now as a backup. Works out quite nicely, actually. Hey, <laughs> they're your treasure tokens, not mine. <laughs> you did this, opponent. You did this. Don't look at me. Don't you look at me. I didn't do that. Probably a ramp spell. I mean, it is a green deck. Okay, that's not a ramp spell, but it is in the spell-based window. So they are actually trying to put a creature into play to mutate. Um, I should use this opportunity to key to the archive, because that is like cyberbullying incarnate. Let's get rid of something that's probably completely irrelevant, and that is that. I think I'll flicker this again, because it's better than the Wellspring. Finding broken cards is uh, pretty good. So, Oh, yeah, no one. <laughs> no one respects the second counterspell. <laughs> no one's going to respect the second counterspell out of a mono-white deck. How dare you attack me. So they have to make tokens through spells, and then in order to mutate a relevant... Uh, target, right? Because they still have to find omniscience every game. <clears throat> so now I cannot flicker key because I want to leave up mana. Uh, that mana being the blue mana. I'm going to flicker the uh, zombie army eventually. Okay. And then, yep, let that damage go through. I can journey... I think I will simply journey the token, so they have to reapply a creature in play. And that seems ideal to me. For their uh, mutate target. I also have a 5-5. Five five. Oh, this is the other blocking creature I was talking about. The you shall not pass. This is the other one. A little bit less exciting, though. Okay, that's totally fine. Again, I can't really flicker the key to the archive. We have all the mana. And if my opponent kills my commander, I can just flash it back in, too, before their turn ends, which is uh, pretty good. Once I cast Counterspell, I can flicker key again. I'm under the impression I will be casting it this turn as well. Are we scooping? All right. <laughs> nice. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Just completely annihilated my opponent uh, with what is literally just Felia. So that's a possibility. Sometimes you need more creatures, or at least I thought you did. But this is the first game I played, and I did not need another creature. Okay, I took out Cathar's Crusade because in the one game I played so far, it didn't seem very exciting. Um, I didn't really actually need another creature, and sometimes even having another creature isn't worth Cathar's Crusade. So I took it out for Griff's... Where is it? Where is it? Griffspoon. So I can give my commander flying and then dodge all the nonsense. That seems ideal. It's not like my commander really flickers. There are other enchantments and auras that give flying. So maybe I could start thinking about that as well. Instead of removal spells. Okay. Um, Would have liked Esper Sentinel. Well, actually, it's mono green. I guess I would not have liked it. <clears throat> I wouldn't have liked it. The one minute artifact that keeps counters with creatures die. Uh, what is that? You're talking about. I know what you're talking about. You're talking about. Um, what are you talking about? The Ozilek? Ozilek? Something? Yeah. <clears throat> so, I'm going to swing and see what happens. I will flicker this, and I will not let my opponent trade, but if they don't trade, their commander dies anyways to the O-Ring. Okay. Yeah, 
if Felia outgrows my commander, that would be really funny. My my opponent like just can't keep up with it. That'd be really funny. So I will flicker again, right? I should have played these last turn. I don't know why I didn't do that. I'm an idiot. Um Do I swing? Of course I swing. But what else am I playing? Let's play this. And if I swing, I can just flicker that. I would like my opponent's next turn to be just their commander. Can still be their commander. Alright, it's not. Yep, just uh, completely annihilated them there. Okay, haven't seen Davriel in uh, a good while. I do like the blowing up of the two mana mana rock. That's pretty ideal. Okay, this is unusual. Okay, that's also unusual. This is not a normal Davriel deck. Probably makes it uh, for a better matchup for them then. But no two mana mana rock and a one drop that's uh, mana sync is unusual. Very strange. Alright, uh. Alright, I have like the best mana rock in the observable universe. I don't think I would ever run the. Pearl Medallion in this deck? I don't think so, at least. I feel like I wouldn't. Okay, so now what? Always playing... Guide of Souls... And always swinging... Flickering uh, my opponent's sleeper so they have to reset it? Sure. This way, if they play Davriel next turn... They might not be able to um, just kill this and block, because it's at one toughness, right? If they just give my commander minus three, minus three, I can then just proceed to kill this, because they can't block. Never mind. They can block. Never mind. Alright. Never mind. They have the mana, because of the jet medallion. Never mind. So I should probably leave up my commander again. The discount is the best hit, but it isn't even that good in this exact spot. It's kind of not really needed because they have Jet Medallion. Return, yep, so they reanimate that and they lose six life. Okay, let's cast this. They can't evolve it, so it has to simply chump block if they want Davriel to stay alive. Uh, this is probably the best thing to flicker out of hand. I don't know if my opponent is willing to defend Davriel here. I could have flickered the sleeper so they could not defend Davriel, but Davriel at one toughness is, or one loyalty, excuse me, is not really that exciting. Let's play this and scry two. Is that what I want to do? Yep. Adeline is pretty good, so I guess I'm going to keep Adeline. And uh, Seek doesn't shuffle, for whatever reason. Okay, maybe... No, no, it doesn't. Seek does not shuffle, it just doesn't show you the card. Seek doesn't shuffle, it just doesn't show you the card. Opponent gets that. Okay, that's not actually that ruinous to me. Yep, yeah, see, Seek doesn't show you anymore, the top, but it, it literally doesn't shuffle. So, kill that. Go face, put the counters... Uh, we can get rid of Cleric. Oh, the token. Alright, token's going to phase. And I will pay the mana and put it on the token. 
So now my opponent needs a sweeper or something, which is, you know, it's mono black. They have to have it. They have to have it. That is not it, and there's not really many targets in my deck. My opponent gets a fairly large life linker, though. And for me, not really anything. Heliod doesn't is not a good target. They shouldn't even choose it. Yeah, so that doesn't do anything except gain two life. I pacify this, and I think they're dead. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, this is mana value. It's mana value. Oh, come on. Last card removal spell. Get out of here. Okay, that's funny. That's funny. I don't really think they could pay that much life. I'd almost wonder if they don't want to cast it. So, this on this, so it can't do anything. And I don't believe there's any lethal out of any of the cards I can find here. Griff's Boon is more damage, though, so I suppose I'll take it. And I'll put it here. I was one energy off from killing my opponent, I think. I was, wasn't I? Yeah, tragic. They go to four, I assume? Unless they really want to draw a card, they go to three. Yeah. Unless they have a way to gain life, the black market will just actually kill them. Assuming my opponent doesn't find a way to survive the attack. No, it can't play Onyx. Okay, Kaimil doesn't let you cast it, though. It, it costs Discover 5. Yeah, it just goes away. That was a mistake. Bit of, oh, come on! What? What? This is the best card they're gonna hit! Come on. All right, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Oh my goodness. Actual shambles here. That was a phenomenal draw. Wow. Okay, well, now I'm just doing this. <laughs> Uh, is this a sorcery only? It is? Okay, so I'll just do it now. On, uh... I guess Pilgrim? Just another thing I don't want my opponent to... ...worry about, I guess. Oh, that was such a devastating hit. I can't believe that. Okay, well, at least this doesn't really do anything, because they don't have any health. What does this do next? Each... Player gains control. Okay, that doesn't really do anything. Victimize kind of does stuff, I think. Maybe not. Okay. Gonti is a problem now. Is my opponent dead by any means? Oh, I stole the blocker! I stole the blocker. They're just dead then, right? They're just dead. They go to one. And then the connections kills them. Wow. <laughs> I did it. Oh. I can't believe I won that game. After they just gained 7 and killed my creature, I thought it was completely over. That's such a good hit from them, but... Wow. Okay, so I also kind of missed lethal with, uh... I could have cast this, and then I would have had the fourth energy to make something even more lethal that exact turn. <laughs> I have. I've made a Sigma male video on YouTube. Me and my brother made some Sigma male videos. Uh, for the memes, of course. Uh, my brother, his exploded. It has like 300,000 views. It's kind of insane. And you want to know the demographic? The demographic were people who take it seriously. Like, they take the Sigma male stuff, like, serious. And they're mostly from India and Pakistan, apparently. Um, let's do the long one, because I, I don't think it matters too much.
I don't see myself as getting all the way there. But if I do, well, I did. Congratulations to me. Why is everyone saying nice to me? Everyone's like super enthralled with my commander. It's also like a terrible thing to kill. Yeah, because it just like doesn't stop existing. I will take this time to play more degenerate things that are very unappealing to play against. I shall make a treasure token. Why is everyone saying nice? What is going on? What is going on? My Sigma male video was about uh, Beatles and the BBC like documentary. I just use it as my Sigma male preset. My brother thought it was hilarious. Alright, this doesn't feel useful, and I'm kind of surprised they killed this, because it doesn't actually... Well, I guess I had one spell for it, but I actually really didn't have many things for Monastery Mentor. Okay, that's a reason to kill it, I guess. Um... Spellbinder is a card. It's not very exciting, though, but I guess I'm taking it. And pass. Get rid of Prison Sentence or Simulacrum? Probably Prison Sentence. Or I guess both. I can blink what? I have to swing with my commander. So, I'd rather not see Angrath next turn. The rest of this is not that amazing. I'm just going to make it so Angrath can't exist. And then, what do I swing with? These two? Right? Yeah. And then I flicker Spellbinder. So, we probably want to exile the top two cards, right? I don't see what the two skeletons are doing. And I can't cast this, right? Yeah. I don't think I cast that. Monastery Mentor doesn't matter. I'd rather have Guide of Souls. But exiling the Mentor would have been alright. But look at my opponent's hand. Do I really care about it? Not really. Not really. So let's get rid of Shieldred. No, we'll get rid of Pyromancer. We'll get rid of Pyromancer. I don't really care about Shieldred at all, actually. Okay, apparently my opponent thought it was a mistake, but I kind of completely disagree. Oh, okay. I just top-decked an answer to it. Yep, when you flicker this, they don't get the card back ever. That's three lands in a row. Alright, they didn't block with the Mentor. Maybe they forgot I just exile it. A little bit awkward there. You can draw. Can't cast it anyways. Alright. We just uh, completely, completely annihilated my opponent there. Um, the Monastery Mentor, for me, didn't do anything. And for my opponent, it really didn't do anything. They could have gotten the value trade, though, and they chose not to. Okay, I took out Oslip Pride, because I don't really gain that much life. And I also took out uh, Monastery Mentor, because I don't really trigger it that much, now that I'm thinking about it. I... I don't even know why I thought it was good, but it, I don't think it is. 
and I added Curse of Silence, which I'm kind of wishy-washy about, and I added uh, Angelic Gifts, so I can give my commander flying, and if it doesn't need flying, I can, uh, to attack and stay alive, I can just flicker this and draw a card that way. Um, land. I might even take this out. I think I'm going to take this out. If I can lower my deck value, weight value nonsense. Yeah, we're taking this legendary land out. I'm not on it. Alright, Esper Sentinel doesn't, doesn't do anything. That's pretty cool. Let's name Dog Doge. Do I play my Doge or do I play this first? If I play this now, it dies immediately. Alright, so no. <laughs> I did that last time. I played something into Flage's, uh text box. I'm like, oh, let me just play this 2-2 uh, two -two in the face of a Lightning Helix. Um, the best my commander is going to do is block, so I'm just going to try to block. If my opponent kills it, that means Flage doesn't do anything, and I think that was also a mistake, so... Okay, there was no getting around that. That was always happening. Oh, my opponent doesn't have a land, I see. This has flash, right? It does. Okay, so I'll try to scam the Esper Sentinel that way. Well, I hope they don't draw land, but I also kind of hope they do, so we have a game to play. Alright, my opponent didn't hit lands and they just wrecked themselves, but, you know, I still take it as a win. My opponent chose to keep this hand. Esper Sentinel is not bad. In fact, it would draw if I cast this, so... Get Schmied it. Alright, what does this look like? This looks like me losing. What about this? Uh, slightly better. I said hello and my opponent said your go. I don't know if that was a mistake or... Uh, not sure what that means. <laughs> Boom. Okay. Looks like they have Haro. Roiling Regrowth. Okay. I don't know why they're casting it now and not just waiting, but maybe there's not much of an incentive to wait. Not really sure. Um, I'm going to flicker Giver Runes, because I want counters on Philia, and I've got nothing else to flicker. But we're going to reprieve their commander. I figured the your go was my opponent being salty, I guess, playing against Felia, which is weird. I don't know, Mythweaver Pock is probably better in my opinion, but okay, alright. We take those. Alright, Flaccid Thermometer. Oh, uh, Thermometer, excuse me. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, okay. You have a harder time? Oh, well, yeah, I'm starting to get that impression. Zengus. Maybe it is better in, in the Pac matchup, but I don't know. Look, let me feel good, alright? Stop criticizing my ideas. Let me feel good about winning with a mono white commander. I've only played against Felia twice. Like, ever. Although, I guess it is MH3. It's on the newer end of things. Okay. See, this to me is ten times better. Like, it's not even close. This just seems unyieldingly more powerful than Felio. Okay. Uh, not sure how this is better than Felio. They exile the land. Not the end of the world, I guess. I feel like I should just scoop. I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. But okay. Uh, I don't know. I would have also kind of liked the lands. I sort of hope I draw a land. I don't. So my opponent exiled something extremely efficient. I would have really liked to land there. Uh, this thing and then probably just lose next turn. I could have just actually flickered Selfless Savior to save myself time. Probably would have made sense, honestly. Surprised they're leading with the Ragavan dash. It's weird.
Well, they have one card left. Hopefully it's not a uh, giant card for Xenagos. I finally draw the land. I will play... Mana value 4 greater... No, none of that's exciting. I guess I'm just running this out, which, again, is not very exciting, but... I don't know. It probably is the strongest white commander. I would not be past that idea. I would... I would confidently say it might be the strongest white commander, but probably not. It's probably still... Uh, what's the three mana one? Ophelia? Not Ophelia, I mean, uh... Not Thalia. What's the what's the three mana X four? I can't remember the name of it. I don't know. So I'd like to give myself protection, but I really just want to play this. So congratulations if you have a remaining card that's actually really good here. I can't remember the X4. When it attacks, you get a 1-1. One, one. That's That, uh, I think, is way better than this. Of course, my opponent just has a giant creature. Why not? As their remaining card. Of course they do. Why not? Uh, it actually double-whiffed. Kind of unbelievable. Kind of unbelievable. But it did literally double-whiff. That's uh, kind of nuts, actually. That is completely nuts, and I will just take 14. Wow, a double whiffed. Can't believe that. Yeah, Adeline. Adeline is is uh, is by far better than Felia, in my humble opinion. In my humble onions. So, what am I flickering? If they keep Xenagos under that, I might just flicker birds. Okay, they did, so... Am I flickering birds? Yeah, we're gonna get rid of Birds of Paradise here. Unless they block with it, because I'm going to exile it if they don't block with it. Okay, they didn't block with it. Alright, no Xenagos, no hasting threat. That is not a giant scary threat. Xenagos is a game I, I usually struggle against, too. Um, this is the game where my opponent went Utopia Sprawl, Birds of Paradise, Ragavan hit me. And this is the board state. Okay, maybe my assessment's just completely wrong. Maybe my assessment of what Feli is capable of is incorrect. This appears to be uh, cracked in half. Let's uh, play that. Let's get a Planes. Um, I kind of want to, like, not flicker the Solemn Simulacrum for a two-turn clock. So let's flicker this. We can flicker the One Ring. No, that doesn't make sense. Alright, I'll just flicker this. Let's get another Planes. I don't need to ramp Planes, and I'd rather just have another chunk of damage chipped away at my opponent's life total. Alright, top deck. What do you got? Wow. Okay, um... Alright, my opponent did what I would have assumed is the strongest thing in the game, and I completely and utterly manhandled it. I'm a little surprised. Now, to be fair, Atali did double whiff, which is the only time I have ever seen Atali double whiff was right now. I've never seen that before. Alright. Look at that Skrelf. Look at him stand there. Let him do nothing. Oh, hey, I have a Skrelf. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Okay. Base mana tithe. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't even looking. I just send it on whatever they cast. <laughs> Lightning strike. Okay, spicy. Go on, trade. Oh, they don't trade. They can't block. Tragedy. Tragedy. Alright, I'm going to keep mine up because mine's uh, pretty special to me. I got nothing to ephemerate now. Pretty sad. 
No way you just swing again. No way you just swing again. Okay, so there must be a creature, right? There must be a creature. There's no reason to... Okay, nope. Oh, this is a 2-2. Two -two. That's why you don't swing. That's why you don't swing. Tithe me. Tithe me back. Oh, tragic. They have another spell? Well... Okay, they don't. I have nothing to do, which is a bit tragic. This is a little bit tragic. Just a wee bit tragic. Okay, so this is not Swords to Plowshares. I don't know what's going on here. I'm a bit confused. I don't know what's going on. Oh, okay. Journey to Nowhere. Yikes, opponent. That's a yikes and a half. Alright, I meant to say good game there. I didn't mean to say oops. I meant to say good game. I went the wrong way. That's my bad. Now I look toxic, but... Yeah, um, the Mana Tithe was really good, and... Oh, that's it. That's all I've got. That's all I've got for you. It, it doesn't really take you off colors, though. If you're, like, two colors and I blow up your breeding pool on turn two, it's still incredibly likely you just have a blue source later, assuming you needed a blue source. Uh, I, I really, I completely disagree that you can color... You can't really color screw people in Commander by blowing up their lands and making them search for a basic at the same time. All of those cards don't color screw commanders. We're, we're so far past that concept in this game. We're so far beyond color screwing people by replacing non-basics with basics. Like, look at my opponent in the turn on turn two. I can't color screw them. This is turn two. Okay, I'm going to flicker this to get rid of that. Uh, I cannot, however, flicker Apparition after, because then they'll make a 2-2 th uh, two -two that can block, so. Kind of tragic. Trust me, it works. Yeah, in 1v1. Uh, <laughs> you gotta link me your deck lists. I don't know what kind of non-basic nonsense you're playing, but I, I just, like... This, we're gonna just, every game, we're gonna see our opponent's opener, and I'm gonna tell you, White Orchid is not going to do anything at all. Okay, um, so I want Griff's Boon, so I can fly over all this degeneracy. Oh, this is so good. Oh, the one minute. Oh, this is so good. Oh, chat, this is so good. <laughs> oh, this is so good. I'm sorry, Cheddarfang, I love you, but you just, you just need to not exist, my guy. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Anyways, what were we talking about? Run six non-basics on average? And it still screws you? I don't believe that. If you run six non- Are you are you five color the first sliver or something? How is this happening to you? Oh no, opponent! I also get to exile that! Oh no! Oh no, wait, do I? Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my opponent did the thing! They kept it under! Oh no! You can't do that! You can't keep it under! Oh, they kept Chatterfang under it because they thought if I flickered it again, they get it back. Okay, so this commander was ten times better than I thought it was. I, uh, I don't think Mono White is usually this good. Uh, Adeline is kind of the best thing you're doing in Mono White, in my opinion. And without it being in the command zone, I'm always like, eh. But uh, this time, thanks for the stream. Going to watch the one back later. Yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. So Felia is just phenomenal. I don't know if it's better than Adeline, but it is very, very, very good. I've only played against it twice. Both times I lost. Uh, so, I don't know, maybe that's... It's not, it's not a big sample size, but now having actually played it, I lost the Mirror, I lost against Nadu, and I think there were one or maybe two, there's one I can remember, actual games that like went back and forth for a while and I actually lost. 
every other game I played, I won. Um, some games, it felt like there was no way to win, and I still won. My opponent had like a Utopia Sprawl, Birds of Paradise, Ragavan, and I still won. I, I can't believe that, but th there's something about permanently dealing with things over and over with Felia that is just completely disgusting. It has flash. You can reasonably cast Felia three times in a game, and that's just kind of nuts. There's not a ton of super god-level hits on um, to flicker in Mono White, but there are there's just enough value from beginning to end in your opening hand, let alone whatever you draw, that... Assumably, you presumably you can actually just flicker kind of anything and get enough value to win a game. I never got Delny in play, unfortunately, but Delny seems like it's good. Felia becomes too big, basically immediately, so I don't even know if I like Delny. This is, I've tried to make Delny work a lot, and I don't think it's possible in Magic Arena. Maybe there's a paper version of this that works, but here it just everything that I like about this always either literally gets too large for it to matter so it doesn't trigger anymore or it's just not good enough to matter in the first place it's a terrible commander to me i, I tried really hard it just doesn't work but um for the main like package of things to flicker it was excellent i never really struggled with ever attacking and sometimes it's fine to sacrifice this to trigger it sometimes that's just what you want to do anyways but uh, there was a lot of games, the vast majority of them, where uh, that wasn't even a problem. I could simply attack and it wasn't going to die even as a 2-2. That happened a lot, actually. There was never a game where uh, Ephemerate did anything except protect Felia. There was no other use for this, but I, I still think it's worth it. There's obviously a ton of uses for this. It just somehow never happened. Yeah, I'm taking out Delny. I'm more thinking about it. Uh, Settle the Wreckage almost... Oh, that was it. The one game that was, like, super back and forth, I settled the Wreckage to my opponent and exiled, like, 15 creatures or something, but I gave them so many lands that they just could cast the remaining cards in their hand, and I lost that way. Uh, that just exemplifies my argument that green is just the best color, because exiling my opponent's entire board, or rather replacing them all with Lenoir Elves was better than just, like, letting them keep their creatures. They don't win that turn, but they win later, because now they have 65 mana. I Again, it's just like ramp spells break this format, and this just ramps your opponent. The same as um, uh, Path of Exile. Had to think about it for a while. Uh, the same with Path of Exile. I, I really don't see an argument for this being good. It almost won me the game. It almost turned it around. But this just isn't the format where you want to give your opponent mana... For any reason, exiling your opponent's creatures for lands is a just it just doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. So I, I don't think that should have been um, Wandering Emperor. This can flicker Wandering Emperor, and the turn it flickers, you can activate it on your uh, your own end step when it comes back, and then it goes to your opponent. And you can't do it anymore. But uh, Wandering Emperor probably should have been in that slot. I really I really think so. So I'll I'll put that in there. The removal spells were maybe not as necessary, maybe more enchantments or even equipment that gives this flying would have been slightly better, and then I just have an even more consistent rate at actually swinging into my opponent. However, again, that wasn't really a big issue. I could reasonably swing almost across every kind of board state, and some removal still just makes sense, maybe. Core Skyfisher never did anything at all. I had it a few games. I it's probably just isn't this just isn't the deck for it. I don't know. If this isn't the deck for it, maybe it doesn't belong in the format, but Felia never really wanted assistance in the flicker department, and this is not only worse than a flicker because you have to simply recast it full retail. It's like a two three flying that doesn't do anything else. And if you have nothing, you can't really even play it. So I, I don't even think that should have been in here either. Um, I didn't really feel like I wanted more cards that cost more than five, and Elish Norn was already kind of pushing it, but now that I'm thinking about it, I believe there's probably a lot of room. For, okay, well, I said a lot. I believe there's some room for, like, overwhelming splendor. Maybe you would make the argument you're not really winning the game by the time you get eight mana for overwhelming splendor, but... I think Overwhelming Splendor kind of works in this deck. I don't see how it doesn't. 
if it's just like a random 8 drop. I'm already running the Aura Tutor creature. Excuse me, that I can flicker over and over to find Auras. Because I have a lot of those. So maybe I can run it. Um, there were a lot of games that I did sort of play a lot of lands, right? I, th it was not unreasonable to get to, like, turn 8 and have 8 lands in play. So I, I probably could run Overwhelming Splendor. And of all the really expensive things in white and colorless, or artifacts or whatever, that you can run in a deck like this, Overwhelming Splendor is the one that I, I personally think is probably among the best. Um, the game I lost... If I had Overwhelming Splendor, I would have won, even in the, the I believe it was the exact window where I cast Settle the Wreckage. I think I had 8 mana at that point in the game, so if Settle the Wreckage was Overwhelming Splendor, I actually would have won that game. So, you know, but I didn't have it, right? Oh, if I had the perfect card for this one game I lost. <laughs> but uh, that was the one game I lost, other than the Nadu game. I'm surprised I can play against Nadu, it doesn't feel remotely close, I it's just like lose on turn three, but uh, yeah, I I it just I blasted so many different styles of decks too. Um, I I went against a lot of different things and I defeated all of them pretty soundly. And it, and even if it wasn't close, I like it looked like it wasn't going to be close and I was going to get trampled. I just turned the game around and won the game. So this commander to me is phenomenal, and I didn't expect it to be. Um, if I had more time, I would probably play more of it, but I, I'm out of time. So, Let me know what you think about Felia. Um, I'm still standing on Lenore Elves, Utopia Sprawl being better than Felia. Uh, <laughs> but uh, debate it in the comments below, because I'd love to hear your humble onions, assuming people get to the end of my videos uh, to hear me say this. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.